from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage virtually of the AWS Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit online. Normally we're face to face in Bahrain or Asia Pacific or even down in New Zealand and Australia, but we have to do it remotely. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great uh, segment here with a great guest, Ian McRae, founder and CEO of Orion Health, talking about the global healthcare industry with cloud technology because now more than ever, we all know what it looks like before COVID and after COVID is upending the healthcare business. We're seeing it play out in real time. A lot of great ben benefits to technology. Ian, thank you for coming remotely from New Zealand and we're here in Palo Alto, California. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Mm, thank you for the invitation. Uh, you're the founder and CEO of Orion Health, global award-winning provider of healthcare technology, supports the delivery of optimized healthcare throughout New Zealand, but now more than ever around the world. Congratulations but now COVID has hit. What is the impact of COVID? Because this is changing healthcare for the better and speed and agility. Is the services up to snuff? Is it up to par? What is the situation of the post COVID or current COVID? And then what will post COVID look like for healthcare? What's your opinion? So, so I've never seen such a, uh, a dramatic change uh, in such a short time uh, as has happened over the last nine to ten months, and and you know what we're what we're seeing is before COVID a lot of focus on automating hospitals, uh, po probably primary care, etc. Now all the focus is on uh, uh, putting medical records together, uh, digital front doors, giving patients uh, access uh, to their medical records in much the same way as you have access to uh, your bank records. Um, uh, when you travel, you go into, well, you, we don't travel now actually, um, but when, uh, when you go into the lounges, uh, the, the airline apps, uh, very, very user friendly and that, uh, and, uh, the uh, healthcare sector has been a laggard in this area. That's all about the change and patients will be wanting, they don't want to go uh, when they're feeling uh, ill, they don't want to go down to their local uh, physician practice because, well, there are other sick people there. Uh, they want to get, they want to get uh, the right care at the right time in the right place. And usually when, they are, when they're not feeling well, they want to go online, probably symptom checking. If they, if they need to have a consult, they would like to do it there and there, not two or three days later, and they'd like to do it virtually. And uh, you know there are definitely certain, some things that can be done remotely, and that's what people want. One of the things that comes up in all my interviews around innovation, uh, and certainly around AWS and cloud, is the speed of innovation. And we were talking before we came on camera about I'm in Palo Alto, California. You're in Auckland, New Zealand. I don't have to fly there, although I'd love to be quarantined for 14 days in New Zealand as summer's coming. But um, we can get remote services. We're talking and sharing knowledge right now. And we were also talking before we went on about how healthcare is taking a trajectory similar to the financial industry. You saw ATM machines, what an innovation, self-service. Then you got apps and then, you know, the rest is history, just connect the dots. The same kind of thing is happening in healthcare. Can you share your uh, vision of how you see this playing out? Why is it so successful? Um, what are some of the things that need to be worked on and how does cloud bring it all together? Just on the banking front, I haven't been to a bank for many years because I just do it all, all online. I had to go to the bank the other day. It was a novel experience. Um, but, but you know, uh, it, I have a lot of, uh, uh, um, when I discuss with, with our developers and they say, well, what, what, what are the requirements? I say, well, hold on, you're a patient. You know what you want. You want your medical record pulled together, right? Uh, you want everything there. You can have easy access to it. Uh, perhaps uh, you might like the computer to make some suggestions to you. Um, it may want to give you warnings and alerts. And you know, at what we're also getting is a lot more data. Now, historically, a medical record would be your lab, your radiology, your pharmacy, a few procedures maybe. Uh, but what we're getting now is genomic data getting added to it, social determinants, where do you live, where do you work, uh, behavioral, uh, uh, lots of other things are getting added into the medical, medical record and it is going to get big. Uh, it is, oh, actually I forgot device data as well, all sorts of, yeah. all sorts of data. Now within, the, within that uh, vast amount of data, there will be signals that can be picked up 
not by humans, but by machine learning. And we need to make the right suggestions, uh, give them back to the uh, patients themselves or their circle of care, be it their doctors, physicians, or maybe their family. Uh, so what I'm what I what I what I the picture I'm trying to paint here is health is going to uh, historically it's been all seated around uh, physicians and hospitals, and it's all about to change, and it's going to happen quickly. I, uh, you know, normally uh, health is very slow. It's a laggard. It takes ever forever to change. Um, what we're seeing right across the world, I'm talking from um, Europe, Middle East, Middle East, Asia, the, uh, North America, right across the world, uh, uh, the big health systems are looking to provide far more, far richer services uh, to their populations. Big joke in Silicon Valley used to be about a decade ago when big data was hitting the scene. We have the smartest data engineers working on how to make an ad be placed next to, for you and on a page. Uh, which, which in concept is actually technically a challenge, you know, getting the right contextual relevant piece of information in front of you. It's a, I guess it, it's smart, but if you take that construct to say medicine, you have precision needs, you also have contextual needs. So if I need to get a physician, why not do virtually? If that gets me faster care, I got knowledge based system behind it, but if I want precision, I then can come in and it's much efficient, much more efficient. Can you share how the data because uh, machine learning is a big part of it, and you know, machine learning is a consumer of data too, not just users. You're consuming data, but the results are still the same. How are you seeing that translate into value? Um, I think the, the first thing is that if you can uh, uh, treat patients uh, earlier, more accurately, uh, you can ultimately keep them healthier uh, and using less health resources. Um, and, you know, you notice uh, around the world, different health systems take a different approach. Um, the most interesting approach uh, we see is when a payer also happens to own the hospitals. Uh, their, 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 their approach changes dramatically and they start pouring a lot of money into primary care. Uh, so they have to have less hospital beds. Um, but, you know, with data information, you can uh, uh, be more precise in the way you uh, treat the patient. So I've had my genome done probably quite a few times, actually. I've just wanted to care pair the different providers. So I have a, a, vari a variant called CYP2C19. I'm pretty sure I've got it right. And uh, that means I hypermetabolize certain drugs. So you give them to me, they won't work. Um, and and uh, so, so there is information in our medical records um, uh, 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 with uh, machine learning, if you can keep a, a Tesla on the road, um, we must be able to use the same. In fact, we are, we have a very big machine learning project here in this company. Um, and uh, to, to not only get the, uh, the information out of the medical records, but serve it back up, this is the hard part, serve it back up to the providers and to the patients in a meaningful, useful way, an actionable way. Not too much, not too little. Um, that, that's usually the challenge actually. Your customer and your business. Um, you guys are in New Zealand, but it's global. You have a global footprint. How are you leveraging cloud technology um, to address your, your customers? Oh, it's hugely useful because we end up with one target platform uh, that we, so when we come to deploy in any part of the world, it's the same platform. And you know, from a security point of view, if we're trying to secure all these on-prem installations, it's it's very, very hard. Uh, so we've got a, we've got a, uh, we have a, a lot of security features that are provided for us. Uh, there are lots of uh, infrastructure, uh, tooling, um, deployment, and monitoring, all the stuff is just inherent within the cloud. And I guess what's most important is we have a standard platform that we can target right across the world. And you're using Amazon Web Services. I mean, I'd imagine that as you go outside and look at the edge, as you have to have these secure edge points where you're serving clients, that's important. How are you securing that edge? Well, fortunately for us, as Amazon is uh, increasingly getting right across the world. So um, there are still some regions which uh, they're still uh, working on, but over time, you know, we, we would be expecting uh, uh, virtually every country uh, in the world to have those sorts of services available. 
you see the future of healthcare going from your standpoint? I mean, if you had to throw um, a projectile in the future to say, you know, five years from now, where are we on the progress and innovation wave? How do you see that, Ian, playing, playing out? So, 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 so in the last 30 years, we've had various waves of innovation in healthcare. Uh, I, I, I think um, uh, this pandemic uh, is, uh, is going to transform healthcare in such a major way in such a short time. Uh, it, 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 we will see the sector totally transform within two to four years. And the transformation will be just like your bank, your airline, or lots of other uh, buying stuff, actually via, 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 via Amazon, actually. Um, uh, uh, we'll see that sort of transformation of, of healthcare. We've talked a lot about healthcare historically being patient-centric. It, it is really not true. Uh, patient uh, Healthcare today, today um, in most parts of the world, has been geared around uh, the various uh, healthcare facilities. So the change we're going to see now is is it'll be geared around the patients themselves, which is really yeah. pretty pretty exciting. Mosation, I want to get my genome done. You reminded me. I got to get that done. Find out, eh? You know. Uh, I you want know, to know. I'm, I, I want to. I want to kind of know in advance, so I can either go down in flames, have a good time, or go the long I, long I, game. I found out I had the positivity gene. You know, I I, I kind of knew that, eh? You know, I'm I'm a pretty positive individual. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, tells you I'm going to get my have to go through that process, but you know, again, fundamentally, you know, that, I agree this industry is going to be right for change. I remember the old debates on HIPAA and having silos, and so the data protection was a big part of that business and privacy. I was a huge, um, but one area I'll get to that in a second. But the one area I want to touch on first is the really an important one for everyone around the world is how does technology help people everywhere get access to healthcare. How do you see that? I mean, obviously there's one approach that the government do it all. Some people like that, some people don't, but generally speaking, technology should help you. What's your view on how technology helps us get accessible healthcare? What it means, no matter where you live or um, uh, what you do, most people have access to the internet, either via a phone or a computer. And so what you want to be able to do, what, you, what we need to do as a society is give everybody uh, access, just like they have access to their banking records, have a similar access to their medical records. Um, and uh, again, you know, the standard features, you know, symptom checking uh, for patients who have chronic conditions, advice, help. Um, medication charts are really important. Um, the ability to go online and do a teleconsult um, for the conditions that don't require a physical examination. Um, uh, be able to message your circle of care. It's basically the 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 automation of of healthcare, which you know sadly has uh, lagged other industries. It is a critical point. You mentioned that earlier. I want to get back on that data, and we'll get the privacy right after. You mentioned AI and machine learning. Obviously, it's a huge part of it. Having data models that are intelligent. I know I've covered Amazon and SageMaker and a bunch of other stuff they're working on, so they're getting smarter. And they're doing it by industry, which I think is smart. But I want to ask you about data. I was just having a conversation this morning with a colleague, and we were talking about AI and AI and machine learning. They're consumers too. So if machines are going to automate humans, which they are, the machines are consuming data. So the machine learning is now a consumer, not an, just a technology. So when you're, a, when you're consuming data, you got to have a good approach. You guys are doing a lot with data. How should people think about machine learning and data? Because if you believe that machine learning will assist humans, then machines are going to talk to other machines and, and consume data and create insights, et cetera, and spawn other systematic effects. How, how should people think about data who are in, in healthcare? What's your, what's your insight there? Well, the, the, the tricky thing with machine learning in healthcare is not so much the algorithms. Uh, the algorithms are readily available on Amazon and uh, elsewhere. And the big problem that we have found, uh, and we've been working on this for, for some time and have a lot of people working on it. The big problem we have is first of all, uh, marshalling, getting all the data together, wrangling the data. Uh, so, uh, and, and then 
there's a there's a there's a there's a fun part where you run the algorithms, and then the then the next big problem is getting the results back into the clinical workflow. So we spend all our time down uh, uh, upstream and downstream, and the bit in the middle, which is the fun bit, uh, takes a very small amount of time. And so um, it, actually, probably the hardest part is getting it back into the clinical workflow. That's the hardest part. Really, yeah. it's really brutal. You know, I really re appreciate what you do. I think this is going to be the beginning of a big wave of innovation. I was talking with Max Peterson about uh, some areas where they saw, you know, thousands and thousands of people being cared that they never would have been cared for virtually with these systems and then cloud. Uh, again, just the beginning, and I think this is a reconfiguration of the healthcare value chain. And configuration. I mean, uh, uh, pre-COVID, uh, we we as a company spend uh, uh, so much time on planes traveling all over the world. Uh, I've I've hardly traveled uh, uh, this year, and uh, with, uh, with Zoom and all the other uh, <laughs> technologies, um, I've quite, quite enjoyed it. To be fair. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, and and I think that there's a reconfiguration of, of of how business is done. It's going to happen well, in healthcare. And, if I and, tell my wife I'm coming to New Zealand, I get quarantined for 14 days. Um, <laughs> that's you know, right. That might, yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck yeah. down under. Summertime. You get one of those uh, hotels with a view of the harbour. Very nice. <laughs> Ian, final question, and just close it out here in this segment because I think this is super important. You mentioned at the top, COVID has upended the healthcare. Uh, industry remote health is what people want, whether it's for you know not being around other sick people or co for convenience or for just access. Um, this is a game changer. You got iWatches now. I was just watching Apple discuss some of the new technologies yep. and processors that they have in these things for heartbeat. So you now have all these signals. This is absolutely going to be a game changer. Software needs to be written. It has to be software defined. Cloud is going to be at the center of it. What's yep. your final assessment? Share share your parting thoughts. Uh, we are definitely in, in, in a, a major reconfiguration of healthcare. It's going to uh, happen uh, very quickly. I, I would have thought uh, 24 months, maybe no more than 36. Uh, and what we're going to end up with is a health system, just like your like your bank. Uh, uh, and uh, we and the big challenge for our sector is first of all the large amounts of data. How do you store it? Where do you store it? And the cloud is is an ideal place to do it. Uh, then how do you make sense of it? Yeah. Uh, you know, how do you how do you give, give just the right advice to an elderly patient uh, versus a millennial who is very technology aware? Uh, so these, there's a lots of uh, uh, innovation and problems to be solved, and lots of opportunities, I believe, for startups and uh, uh, new innovative companies. And um, and uh, so it's interesting times. I think times, I'm sure, you know, it's so much to do. Great recruitment opportunity, Orion Health. Thank you for spending time. Ian McRae, founder and CEO of Orion Health, an award-winning provider of health information global, based out of New Zealand. Thank you for taking the time to come on. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Okay, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit online. We're not face-to-face, -face. normally we'd be in person, but we're doing it remotely due to the pandemic. Thank you for watching theCUBE.